This is the first of a two-part demo on numerical derivatives. In this video, we'll review the theory behind numerical differentiation. In the next video, we'll apply numerical differentiation in MATLAB. Suppose you have a data set like the one here. If you need to differentiate it, the first thing you would probably think to do is take the derivative like you would in calculus. You get stuck pretty fast because analytical differentiation requires an equation, but you just have a collection of points. You could curve fit the data, but that's not always feasible. There are three main ways we can approximate the derivative. The forward difference, the backwards difference, and the central difference. The forward difference approximates dy dx by using the current point and the point in front of it. Let's call the point at x equals 4 our current point, and let's call that point xi. That makes the point ahead of it xi plus 1. The corresponding values are yi and yi plus 1. The slope of the secant line between these two points approximates dy dx. We can write this as dy dx equals y of i plus 1 minus y of i over xi plus 1 minus x of i. You'll see the forward difference again once we get to differential equations near the end of the semester. This is the mechanism behind Euler's method, if you've heard of that. The backward difference is the same as the forward difference, but instead of using the point in front of the current point, we use the point behind it. In this case, our x value would be x of i minus 1, and the corresponding y value would be y of i minus 1. The secant line looks like this, and so the equation for dy dx is dy dx equals y of i minus y of i minus 1 over x sub i over x sub i minus 1. In practice, the backward difference is useful because you don't need to know any points in the future, unlike the forward difference. Lastly, the central difference uses the future and past data points to approximate the derivative at the current data point. Visually, it looks like this, and we can write the equation as dy dx equals y of i plus 1 minus y of i minus 1 divided by x of i plus 1 minus x of i minus 1. Even though we are still at the current data point x sub i and y sub i, we don't actually use them in our computation. The central difference is the most accurate of the three methods because it uses both the past and the future data. All three approximations were derived from the Taylor series expansion. I won't get into that here, but you can increase the accuracy of these approximations by adding more terms to the expansion. By doing so, you increase the number of data points you use. Alright, so we have three ways of numerically computing dy dx. Each method uses a different pair of data points, which we can leverage when solving engineering problems. Suppose we want to compute dy dx for our example here. Obviously, you can't use the backwards or central difference at the first point here because it requires a point behind it. And you can't use the forward or central difference at the last data point here because both methods require a data point ahead of it. A good compromise is to apply the forward difference at the first point, the backward difference at the last point, and the central difference at all of the interior points. So for our example, we would use the forward difference here, the backwards difference here, and the central difference at all three of the middle points. This approach only works if we have the entire data set. If we're working with a real-time system, we won't have any future points, so that makes the forward and central differences kind of useless. That's not to say they don't have their place in the world of numerical analysis, because they definitely do. And that's all for this video. In the next part, we'll implement all of this in MATLAB with another practical example. See you soon.